George Janko had a Christian pastor on his podcast, The George Janko Show. And he asked him a very important question. Is Jesus God? And if he is God, where does it say that in the Bible? I'm very curious to hear his answers and to respond accordingly. So without wasting any time, let's watch the clips and come back. Uh, is Jesus God? And if he is God, where in the Bible does it state that he's God? Very good. This is actually a very good question. But remember, the question is, is Jesus God and where does it say that in the Bible? So we would like a simple statement from Jesus himself claiming to be God, not the statement of the enemies of Jesus or people who never met Jesus in their entire lives. Let's hear the pastor's answer and respond. John chapter 8, verse 58. Whoa, Jesus. Yo, he shot from the hip. I am so jealous that you could do that. So I just want you to read that verse for yourself. Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. Now, the Jews did not call God G-O-D. The Jews called God Adonai. Yahweh. Oh, I thought it was Adonai. Yes, also Adonai mm -hmm. and El Shaddai. Those are different names for God. Got it. And one of them was Yahweh which is the Hebrew verb to be, I am who I am. There was no misunderstanding. The Jews picked up stones to stone him for blasphemy. Before Abraham was born, I am. Deliberately, Christ is claiming to be God. I'm sorry, but I am doesn't mean Jesus is God. You are basically taking the testimony of the enemies of Jesus. The Jewish people, according to the New Testament, tried everything to discredit Jesus. And claiming he was blaspheming is just one of their lies to reject him. John 8 verse 52. At this they explained, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste that. So are you going to be consistent and accept the statement of the same Jews who said that Jesus was blaspheming when he said I am, that Jesus is also possessed by a demon? You wouldn't do that. So why are you using the enemies of Jesus as evidence for Jesus being God? It doesn't make any sense at all. John 8 verse 58 to 59. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. First of all, if Jesus was truly a god, why was he scared and hid himself from his own creation? Doesn't make any sense. Let's ignore all of this and analyze the I am statement academically. What Christians are trying to claim is that Jesus claimed to be I am. The same name God used in Exodus 3 verse 14. Exodus 3 verse 13 to 14. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So God said to Moses, Tell the Israelites that I am has sent you. So we have I am in the Old Testament and I am in the New Testament. So is it the same I am in both verses? Well, it's not. Refuting every single Christian who tries to use this verse to claim that Jesus claimed divinity using I am. Exodus 3.14 is in the Old Testament in Hebrew. And I am in the verse in Hebrew is Ahyeh. And Ahyeh does not mean Yahweh. And the Jewish people watching this video agree with me. So what about the New Testament now? Did Jesus at least use the same word? Or did he use a different word? John 8.58 in the New Testament is in Greek and not Hebrew. And the words for I am in Greek are Ego Eimi. Not Yahweh or Ahyeh in Exodus. If it was truly a name for God, they would not translate it. Joseph, for example, in Hebrew and Greek stays relatively the same. Yusuf stays Yusuf no matter the language. We don't translate the proper names. But for some reason, Christians want us to believe that Jesus spoke Greek and also translated the name of God. It doesn't make any sense. I am is not the name of God. And the word Yahweh doesn't exist a single time in the New Testament. So Jesus did not claim divinity. At best you can claim that Jesus by saying before Abraham was born I am, that he pre-existed Abraham or his existence predates his birth on earth. So does that mean Jesus is God? Well of course not. Because if pre-existence means you are God, then Jeremiah is also God according to the Bible. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So for Christians to be consistent, if they believe Jesus is God because of his pre-existence, then they should also believe that Jeremiah is also God. Because according to the Bible, he also pre-existed. But of course, Christians are not consistent, especially when it comes to Jesus. So let's hear his other arguments for the divinity of Jesus. Then in John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. No misunderstanding. They didn't think, oh, I see this guy's a Hindu. He thinks everybody's part of God, so he's claiming that he were all a part of God. No, no, no. Jesus was a monotheistic Jew who understood God is one. The Shema of Israel, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. And very deliberately, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Once again, no misunderstanding, the Jews pick up stones to stone him for blasphemy. Again, the same problem. Why are you taking the enemies of Jesus as a reliable source of information? Yes, Jesus did say according to the New Testament that he is one with the Father. John 10 verse 30 to 31. I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. We should understand that the enemies of Jesus tried every single trick in the book to reject him. On this occasion, they lied and claimed that Jesus claimed to be God. So did Jesus accept their statement or did he refute them? I want to know what Jesus meant by saying I and the Father are one, not what his enemies claimed. John 10 verse 32. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? So Jesus in the next verse acts shocked and dumbfounded by the actions of his enemies. He was confused about why they were trying to stone him. And when they explicitly tell him because of blasphemy, what did Jesus say? If he truly claimed to be God, you should expect him to be, yes, you are right, I am God. But did he do that or defend himself against their accusations? John 10 verse 33. We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. It can't be more explicit than this. They are explicitly telling him why they are trying to stone him. They told him because he claimed to be God. So if Jesus Jesus is God, he should tell them, yes, you understood me correctly. I am your God, so drop your stones and worship me. But he didn't do that. He refuted all their lies and defended himself against the accusations. John 10 verse 34 to 36. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the father set apart as his own and sent into the world. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? So when Jesus said I and the father are one, he meant to say he was God's son. Jesus never claimed to be God. So Christians will take the accusations of the enemies of Jesus and ignore the clarification given by Jesus himself. And moreover, when Jesus tried to defend himself against the accusations and said, it is not written in your law, I have said you are God. He is referring to the Old Testament. Psalms 82 verse 6. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. God in this verse called the judges gods. And Jesus quoted this verse to defend himself against the accusations of blasphemy. It's like Jesus saying, how can you claim I am blaspheming when God call you gods? And I only call myself the son of God. I believe I showed with clear evidence that Jesus didn't claim to be God when he said, I and the Father are one. But let's assume that Jesus being one with the Father means he is God. So are the disciples now also gods? John 17 verse 11. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. So the same oneness between the Father and Jesus is between the disciples. So if being one means one God, then the disciples are also God. But no Christian believes that, confirming that being one doesn't mean one God. But in fact, it means one in purpose. Then by his deeds, he obviously claimed to be God. Mark chapter 2, Jesus is teaching in a packed out house and all of a sudden the roof is ripped open and a man, a paralyzed man, is lowered on a mat to his feet. Jesus looks into the face of the paralyzed man and says, your sins are forgiven. Bingo. George, you got it. And then they got mad and they were confused. Bingo. 
And I found that so beautiful because he was trying to weigh that forgiving sins is way more powerful than raising a man who's crippled. Bingo. Precisely. You got it. By claiming to forgive the sins of a man he'd never probably seen before, Jesus is claiming to be God. Because only God can ultimately forgive my sins. If I do you dirty, yes, I have to ask you for forgiveness. But ultimately, I have to ask God for forgiveness. Because when I do dirty to you, I'm saying, hey, God, when you made George, lousy job. I can trample all over him. Baloney. When God made George, he did a wonderful job. And if I denigrate him by tap dancing all over his face, I am guilty. And I need to ask George for forgiveness. But I also ultimately better ask God for forgiveness. Christians also try to claim that Jesus is God because he forgave sins. But did he? Did he ever say, I forgive your sins? Let's read the verse in question. Mark 2 verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus didn't say that he forgave his sins. He just said that his sins were forgiven. Let's remind Christians that Jesus is a prophet of God and receives revelation from God. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the same thing. He promised paradise to his disciples by name. Narrated Abdul Rahman bin Auf that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Bakr is in paradise. Umar is in paradise. Uthman is in paradise. Ali is in paradise. Talha is in paradise. Az Zubair is in paradise. Abdul Rahman bin Auf is in paradise. Sa'id bin Abi Waqqas is in paradise. Sa'id bin Zayd is in paradise. And Abu Ubaidah bin Al Jarrah is in paradise. So does it make Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a god now because he had access to this information? Formation? Well, of course not. Let's assume that Christians are right and forgiving sins makes you God because only God can forgive sins. What about the disciples again in the Bible? John 20 verse 23. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So according to the New Testament, the disciples also have the authority to forgive sins not only Jesus. So are the disciples also gods now? Of course not and no Christian believes that. So forgiving sins doesn't make a person God according to the New Testament. All the arguments and the verses he tried to use don't prove that Jesus is God and can be easily refuted like you just saw in this video. That's why I'm calling all the Christians watching this video to have an open heart and open mind and to come back to true monotheism and to stop worshipping a human being. Jesus alayhi said was but a prophet of God and the true Messiah and not God. O oh, people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah Jesus the son of Mary was but a messenger of Allah and his word which he directed to Mary and a soul created at a command from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say three, desist. It is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. So please come back to Islam, the religion of Jesus alayhi salam and all the prophets of God. Read the Quran and learn about the life of the last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I hope you benefited from this video. You can also watch this video about Shah Rukh Khan and did he leave Islam. And don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.